you. Thank you very much. Okay, um, good afternoon, everyone. Well, first of all, thank you for being here at four today. I hope you had a nice day. I had a good one. Uh, maybe uh, before I start, uh, I should tell you that I'm originally from Switzerland, and that will explain both my French accent and my weird name that only my mother can say properly. But, uh, okay, uh, so uh, I work, uh, I've been working for the last four years uh, at The Telegraph in London. Uh, I'm now a principal data scientist at The Telegraph. So, uh, The Telegraph is one of uh, the major uh, newspaper in the UK. Uh, it's been available in print since 1855. And uh, today, obviously, we have a website and a few uh, applications. And obviously, with that, we start collecting a lot of data. Uh, hence, the need for data science. So, the main objective of the data science team is obviously to analyze our audience, understand our audience, but then as well to build product uh, that will allow us to build engagement with our audience. So recommender systems. So why, uh, why, why talking about recommender systems today? Well, first of all, they are everywhere. So today, every time you go on the internet, uh, you will have behind those sites recommender systems. So when you go shopping, recommender systems will already know what it is you used to, order what you like, and you will you know, virtually come with a basket prepared for you. Uh, entertainment, we all know that. Every time you know, you're know looking for music or any kind of uh, TV program, a recommender system will have that sorted for you. Uh, and, 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 you know, more surprising aspects, jobs, actually. It's really funny. Every time I'm logging, you know, on certain uh, social network, I have propositions for a new job. So, are they, you know, even taking the control there? Uh, and I'm not talking about uh, dating, but, you know, all of those uh, dating applications today, so do they know better, you know, even in terms of, uh, you know, uh, your next partner? So, they're everywhere. And... Uh, we, we need, well, today my idea is to share uh, some thoughts about them, uh, try to understand uh, how they work, and uh, yeah, so at least we are aware of, uh, you know, what they use uh, when they show us uh, information on the internet. So, why do we need uh, recommender systems? Well, actually, they work quite well, and uh, those numbers are unbelievable. So 75% of the content consumed on Netflix is the result of Netflix showing us uh, recommended content. So we go on Netflix, we don't even know what it is we want to watch, they tell us what to watch. Um, we, we, we know that, we, we have that intuition about Netflix, but when we think about Amazon, where I'm going to Amazon to buy a book, but still 35% of the transactions on Amazon are related to some of the recommendation, which means that I went with an intention on Amazon, which was to buy a book, and I will buy an extra one or change my mind and buy something that they recommended for me. So, quite impressive. Well, so... It seems that everything is perfect. Uh, you know, it seems that those recommender systems are improving you know, our way of shopping and our way of interacting uh, with internet websites. But as you know, uh, uh, especially over the last uh, years, uh, the media uh, had a lot uh, to say about uh, the over-influence of those systems. Uh, and, and you've all heard about the filter bubble and the echo chamber. So the echo chamber is actually quite, a, a, it's an older uh, concept. Uh, it existed before the internet, and it's actually uh, that principle where, based on the, where I study, uh, you know, the, the kind of clubs I'm, I'm attending, uh, the job I have, uh, the books I read, the, the, the publication I read, means that I'm only, I, I have that feeling that around me, all of the people are thinking the same thing as me, because, you know, I, I have a tendency to be in that echo chamber where, you know, everyone, every time I'm being in this, uh, you know, conference today, every time I'm talking to someone, I have the feeling that we think, you know, we, we have similar thoughts. Uh, obviously, uh, with the internet, 
uh, and, and you know, uh, th those filter bubbles that we have now, that phenomenon has been amplified. And uh, especially, uh, well, we, we, we have uh, obviously the recommender system, but we also have the search engines, where every time you do a search on Google, uh, the results that will uh, display to you will be based on where you are, who you are, what you've been searching in the past. So that's a form of recommendation as well, which is there. And uh, actually, funnily enough, uh, yesterday on my way to, to this conference, uh, I was reading uh, the last uh, book by uh, Harari, uh, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. And actually, he's describing a, a, a world, it's kind of a scary vision, where human beings even lose the capability to make decisions by themselves because we are so, we're becoming so much used of going on a system which has already chosen everything for you that, you know, uh, that's a risk. Well, obviously, I, I only read uh, three chapters. I hope, he, I hope he's becoming more optimistic as the book goes because it could be scary. Okay, but now, uh, a high-level introduction on how those recommender, recommender systems are working. So obviously, uh, there are uh, many, many different algorithms, but uh, most of uh, the recommender systems that we have today on our websites belong to one of the families uh, that I will describe here. I'm sure that all of you who have a technical background and have tried to play uh, with recommendation came across collaborative filtering. So that's the most obvious one. It's been well documented. It's everywhere. Uh, and it allows to build the people like you uh, kind of recommendations. Uh, so the way it works, uh, so collaborative filtering will, will, will use um, the, the preferences uh, of a user, of different users, to, to, well, actually the ratings we had on products in the past to infer our preferences. And actually, once you have a new user, if it has rated some uh, piece of content, in the same manner than me, we know that whatever that, that uh, new user is buying can be recommended to the other users. So to make it maybe clearer, so if I'm rating uh, books positively and you are rating the same books positively, next time I'm buying a book, there is a fair chance that you will be interested to buy the same book. And that's, one, that's what collaborative filtering is doing for you. But uh, then you might as well have heard about content-based uh, recommendations. So those recommender systems will try to extract features from the content in itself. So all of the features of a product, uh, all of the topics of an article, and actually the principle here is to try, if I'm currently reading an article, say, on a newspaper, uh, I, will, I will know exactly what the article is talking about, and I will try to extract uh, an article which is talking about the same topic. So say if I'm reading a story about Brexit, I will look for another story related to Brexit, and I will try to display it to that user. So very different way of building recommendation, serving different purposes. So for example, on newspaper, you will see uh, the content-based recommender very often in those elements on the page, mid-article recommendation on, on the pages. So you start reading an article, and then on the middle, you will have uh, a box showing you some articles about uh, related uh, topics. Uh, another way of doing recommendation, so in collaborative filtering, we're trying to infer the preferences of the users. Uh, you, can base, you can have an approach based on user profiles. And actually, I don't know if you remember, a few years ago, Netflix was chasing us and asking us to rate films we had seen in the past. So the idea that there was for them to understand the genres in which I'm interested. So by telling them that I liked a certain movie, they would associate that movie to a genre, and they knew that I was interested in that genre. And then they can build that kind of histogram I'm, I'm representing here, where they know all of the genre I'm interested in, and based on that, they can recommend me the next uh, piece of content. One question I have very often when I talk about a recommender system is, is it AI? So the answer is, it depends. So uh, 
I, I, I have here that shape showing uh, where the recommender systems are, and as you can see, there is a part of it which is outside of the AI circle. So, for example, take, uh, think about a newspaper. If uh, the editor of the newspaper uh, wants to give you a list of recommended articles, that would be human intelligence and not uh, not uh, AI at all. But then uh, we have plenty of rule-based way of doing uh, recommendation systems. Say, if you read five articles about a topic, maybe I should recommend you something specific. And those kind of uh, ways of doing looks pretty similar to the expert systems that we were building in the 70s. And that's, that's a trivial form of, of AI, so rule-based uh, recommendation. And then obviously we'll be talking about collaborative filtering or more complex algorithms. So we enter the world of uh, machine learning, and that's clearly, as, as you know, we, we represent here, machine learning is a component of, uh, of AI, so definitely yes. And if you go through the literature and uh, all of the research happening currently about uh, how to build recommended systems, you will see that many, uh, uh, many researchers in, in, in universities are developing new ways of uh, building recommendations be based on uh, deep learning. So this time, no more doubts. It's clearly AI for everyone. So why do we need more than one recommender system? Because, you know, uh, you invested some time learning collaborative filtering, you have your tool which is working, why would you need more than one? Uh, well, they all work differently. As, as we were describing the content-based, uh, you, you know, we understood that uh, actually content-based will always recommend uh, products or articles which are extremely similar to the one you are uh, currently consuming. So those kind of recommenders will not bring an effect of surprise. It will be very narrow. So depending on uh, you know, what you're trying to do, uh, different uh, recommender system will, uh, will be promoting different behaviors. And I, and I think the critical aspect here is when you think about a recommender system, you should first think about what are your objectives. So do, are you trying to increase uh, the number of clicks on your site. I, you, you need to understand what am I trying to achieve with my recommender systems. And then you will have thoughts about the type of content you have and the, the, the kind of user journeys that you have on your site. And when you combine those elements, so you know what you're trying to achieve, you know your content and you know your journeys, you can decide which combination of, the, of, of recommender system will give you uh, the best, best result. And it might be that uh, for, for some recommendation, it might be that you combine different uh, algorithm to produce a single piece of recommendation, or it might be that on one single site, depending on what, where you are on the site. For example, uh, uh, another example coming from newspapers, uh, when we, we have a section about gardening, and obviously we have a section about sports and finance. So an article in gardening will be something that people can consume regularly for the next 20 years. You know, it will not change. Sports results, well, the results from the game last night might, might not be relevant in a week. So those considerations means that I have a different strategy to build recommendation on those different sections. And same for uh, the kind of people visiting my site. Uh, the avid reader of the Telegraph who is coming every day, many times a day, has, has read all of the uh, top stories of, 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 of the newspaper. So for that kind of user, having a recommender, recommender system based on popularity uh, would be a failure because I know that for sure uh, that user has already consumed that content. So what do we use? And here now I'm talking about us. So our objective when we choose a recommender system, the main objective is to engage our readers. So we want to ensure that they find relevant content and we want to give them a personalized experience. And then obviously on top of that, we can overlay some commercial, you know, we need to finance uh, the production of the content. We need to pay data scientists. So we need to find ways, uh, you know, to monetize our content. Uh, but uh, but the, first, the first one for, for us is engagement. So we want that, you know, those readers who are currently reading one single article uh, in each of the visits read two articles. That's the main objective. Mm. So how can
can I evaluate my recommenders? And that one is extremely interesting, uh, especially when you start if you start your journey into recommendation by talking to vendors and you go to some uh, companies providing out-of-the-box recommender systems and you ask them for a proof of concept, so they will give you a recommender system and then they will give you a framework uh, that they will use to tell you how well uh, the recommender system is working. Guess what? The, the only criteria they, they will use will be accuracy or one of the, its derivatives. So many, many people think that the only way to evaluate a, a recommender system is to measure click-through rate or count the page use. Uh, but thinking about it, if you push it to the extreme, where are you going? In our business, it means that you attract people to clickbait. It's very easy to generate page view. We know that we have celebrity-related content that are more likely to attract a click than more difficult content. But once again, coming back to our objective, is it my objective to promote a click at all costs, or do I have another agenda? So diversity could be a measure. So there are different ways of measuring diversity. But uh, am I happy uh, to see uh, the same recommendation if I'm visiting the website now and tomorrow morning, or should I see a change? Am I happy to have a recommendation which is only about a single topic, or do I want the recommender to try to expand my views? Novelty. Uh, am I sure that the content uh, the, the system is recommending me is, is new to me? Coverage, same stuff. Is the recommender system able to recommend me content coming from all of the corner of my website, or is it specialized in one certain corner of the website? Then there is that concept, which is unfortunately, for, 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 the, f for the first one, it's easy enough to derive uh, metrics and to have hard metrics you can measure. Uh, probably the best one, the one where we would like to succeed is serendipity. So we want a, re a recommendation which is unexpected. So I want to recommend you a piece of content that you wouldn't, ha wouldn't have found without the recommender system. And I would like as well that piece of content to be something of interest to you. So if I'm successful on those two metrics, so there are ways of combining different metrics to measure serendipity, but uh, serendipity should be uh, one of uh, the ultimate one. So where are we going next? Um, we've seen Obviously, and especially you know, in, in the media, we have a role, so uh, we have to be careful in terms of uh, where we push our users. And we, we've been you know, touching on, on that topic of, uh, of the risk of uh, the filter bubbles. Uh, but now, as well, you know, we've been describing the convenience of those uh, commercial websites which know my habits and you know, are, becoming, are making my life much more easier because you know, every time I'm going back, they have you know, uh, ready recommendation for me. Uh, somehow I like uh, that quote uh, from Bezos. It must be, it must be pretty old. It's a pretty old one because uh, today probably 4.5 million uh, customers is not much for, for, <laughs> for Amazon. But uh, at that time, Bezos uh, was saying that if he has 4.5 million customers, he should have 4.5 million different stores. And that's kind of, uh, you know, they're trying to achieve with all of the, the recommendations, and I like that aspect. So I guess uh, as, as people, you know, evaluating recommender system, implementing recomm recommender system, we have a responsibility and we have to ensure that, uh, you know, we are guided by uh, the values of our organization. So we can, you know, push people uh, in, well, we can influence the behavior of people and we have to be careful and be sure that our organizations and, and their values are respected when we do that. Okay, thank you very much.